honoring and celebrating our veterans this week and want to thank Mr. Gazoo for his service and Mr. Onion is with us today and thank you for your service. Mr. Tom John Thompson, thank you for your service. And if I've missed anybody in the room, I, I apologize. But we do. It's a, a join your, the school's presentations and look forward to the rest of them uh, the remainder of this week. If, if you will allow me real, real quick, Mr. Mr. Gazoo, I would like for the principals to stand for just a moment. Can we just thank them and clap? We're here to talk about test scores, and we've got a lot to celebrate in Russell County. Thank you all. Thank you. Call a meeting to order at this time. Roll call. This action is taken by calling each board member's name with a board member answering present. Mr. Murray? Present. Mr. Selby? Present. Ms. Wilson? Present. Mr. Sigmatham? Present. Mr. Kazoo? Yes, present. All board members present. Items, the adoption of the agenda. Of course, this is a special call meeting. We can't add anything to the agenda, and I have nothing to recommend to remove, so I uh, recommend the agenda be approved as presented. I'll make the motion we approve the adoption of the agenda. I second it. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Selby? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Sickenbottom? Yes. Mr. Gazoo? Yes. <sighs> Next item on the agenda is public comments. Is there anyone? Like to make any public comments at this time? Or forever, we'll keep these. If not, we'll move on. Next item is annual Title I public meeting. So the uh, annual Title I public meeting is held to offer parents and guardians and community stakeholders, really anybody that wants to give some inputs on our Title I program. Um, all of our schools uh, receive a, a number of teachers and so much support. You're probably going to rattle that number off of what we what, what we receive. It, hel it helps lower student-teacher ratios, provides for professional development, just a litany of things. So, Ms. Retro, she's our federal program's Title I coordinator. What a wonderful day, beautiful day to have a board yes. meeting mm -hmm. and to talk about the learning of the children in Russell County. So, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to get to as uh, share that with everyone. Uh, what we decided to do this year, uh, we're required by federal statutes to have an annual meeting to discuss our Title I program and how we utilize federal funds within our schools. So we decided since the principals were here today to discuss assessment results, that that too is part of how we spend our federal dollars. So we decided to join these two meetings together into one. And this is kind of double serving as our Title I annual meeting and our um, assessment results that we want to uh, share with everyone today. All right, so um, federal funds, we were fortunate this year, we got a boost of about $300,000. Um, so we're right at about $1.5 million that we get with federal funds. And the majority of that we use for teacher salaries across the district. And so I'll get into that in just a moment. but. We also were able to hire another instructional coach at our elementary schools this year, and we were so thankful for that because it's very hard for one person to serve three schools. So that really uh, was a tremendous asset for us to be able to do that. So most notably, that was one uh, big change that we were able to do with the funds that we received this year. Uh, but the board members, I've given you a handout. I'm not gonna read it word for word, but I just wanted to highlight some key things that we do with our federal dollars and how we uh, utilize those uh, monies within our schools and some of the programs and things that we use with those. Um, but the biggest advantage is, like I said, um, federal funds this year pays for 19 teachers across the district and other staff as well, but 19 classroom teachers. So you can imagine what it would be like if we had to give up 19 teachers in our district. That would be a huge hit for us. So without federal dollars, we, we would really be in a crunch. So we're very thankful that we are able to have this money and I hope that the federal government continues to um, fund. And that's in addition to, it can't, it can't, maybe you're gonna mention this, I'm sorry, but no, okay. you can't uh, supplant what your student teacher ratio has to be from the state. Right. So these teachers are in addition to us meeting our, the minimum teacher student ratio. So advantages of federal programs, um, again, like I said, the, by having those teachers, we're able to have smaller class sizes. That's our, our, our first and foremost 
foremost goal is to increase the number of teachers so that we have less students that the teachers are responsible for in their classrooms because research shows that the least number of students a teacher is able to have in their room, the more learning that occurs in that room. So, so that's our main goal in Russell County is to make our class sizes as small as possible with these federal dollars. Uh, we also are proud to uh, use that money for RTI, response to intervention, resources and staffing. We have, each elementary school gets an extra intervention person through federal funds. So that is something that we're really thankful for as well, especially since COVID, we're still uh, trying to bridge that loss of learning gap from COVID. So extra intervention staff is, is very important in our elementary schools right now. Um, we also um, support curriculum and instructional uh, resources, a lot of online resources that are supplemental to the core. Thankful for that. Professional learning, all of our professional learning for the teachers um, comes from Title I and Title II. In our diagnostic assessments, um, we have we use math in our district as our universal screener, so we're able to uh, fund diagnostic assessments such as that as well. The main goal of Title I, I want to read one little statement here on the second page, is its purpose is to make sure that all children have the opportunity to receive a high quality education. And that's what we strive for regardless of socioeconomic status, race, gender, whatever. We want all children in our county to learn and have the most access to high quality teachers and resources that we can. So uh, we really, if the, preacher, if, if the principals call and, and say, hey, do you have any funding for this program or that? I'll try my best. I'll say, hey, let me look at some old funding, see if I have any left over. And, and I'll try if they ask me to get whatever they need. So. Sometimes I can't, but most of the time we're able to find something that we can do to help them out because we want those resources in the hands of teachers and students. Okay, so the use of federal funds, um, like I said, it pays for 19 teachers, a Title I does. Um, it also pays for 1.3 full-time equivalent for our instructional coaches and multiple subs that fill in as extra interventions, uh, interventionists, or when we have um, teachers who want to work together to, to work on their curriculum or whatnot, we're able to get subs in the building and pay for it out of those funds as well. Title II pays for 1.5 full-time equivalent for instructional coaches, and it also this year we were able to add um, a new ESL instructional assistant. Um, we are up about 40 ESL kids, and if you don't know what ESL is, that is our students who do not speak English as their first language. So we used to call them immigrants or migrant students also. Um, we're now at 167 ESL kids in our district. And so we usually cap out around 130, 127, something like that. So we were very thankful that we had enough funds to add a person who works um, with Mary Grumman who serves the middle school and high school. So that, I think that's been a tremendous asset there too um, because it was so hard and difficult for her to get to all the students that she has to serve. You want to say, did you want to say something about that? It looked like you had something to say. No, no. Okay, all right, <laughs> just making sure. Okay, so <laughs> Title III also pays for half of another ESL instructional assistant and, and that person is housed at Russell Springs Elementary where we have our largest number of ESL students. So without that person there, that would be very difficult um, to service all the kids that we have at Russell Springs Elementary School. And the numbers just keep rising. Every week it seems like we are enrolling new ESL students. Title IV pays for 1.2 on our safety resource offers, safety resource officers at the schools, so we're, we're glad for that. And it also pays two-tenths of the salary uh, to, to round out the, the funding for our instructional coaches. And other use of federal funds, like I've said before, to build professional learning, um, to provide intervention strategies and resources in RTI, and our goal is ultimately to reduce achievement gaps for at-risk learners. And a couple more things here of why we're having our meeting today. A big component of Title I is parent involvement. So this meeting today is to offer anyone in the community an opportunity to give feedback on our Title I programs within our schools. So as the principals present their 
assessment results to you today. If you have any feedback that you want to give them, please feel free to fill out the yellow feedback sheet that are on the tables. Anybody in the room or in the, anybody in the community can come to the Board of Education if they're not here today and fill out this feedback form to give us feedback on um, ideas that you may have to make our program better within our schools. So we want parents to feel comfortable to, to say and, and suggest anything that or ideas that you have for improving what we do uh, with our federal dollars. So that's the main goal of the meeting today, to give everyone that opportunity. So parent involvement consists of things um, such as open houses, literary, literacy and math uh, culture nights, uh, festivals that they have at the schools, assemblies, um, there's parent workshops and trainings. Um, I know a lot of that happens at the high school as far as the trainings, such as the FAFSA nights that they do for college and college entrance, things like that. Um, academic celebrations. Um, we provide take-home learning kits and resources for our younger students. And many, many other activities um, that involve parents. But parents are always welcome in our schools. We want them to know that. And we want them also to know that they have an opportunity to give feedback at any time during the year, not just today. And in doing so, um, anytime they want to review our parent and family engagement policy, which is also um, on display on your tables today, feel free to review that policy, make any recommendations that you would like to make for us on how to improve that policy. And we do look at that and revisit that every year and make revisions. And you can see, um, if you have that on the table, we did meet on um, October 30th of this year and made our revisions for this year and are certainly welcome to do more revisions after the meeting today as well. Um, one Tommy, other, yes, you have a question? Yes. Well, I just want, I was just curious about the, the open houses and the FAFSA and all that thing. You know, how does Title I involve in that? Um, because it's parent involvement. Anything that involves okay. parents coming into the school. So, it doesn't necessarily always have to fund it. Okay. That's, that's yeah, just part of the program. Of it, yeah. But it's just involving the parents in what we're doing at the schools. So any, anything that goes along with that. And then we keep documentation of that through sign-ins, agendas, any activities that parents would come in. Veterans Day activities that are, have been happening and will be happening the rest of the week. All of that falls under Title I as, as far as meeting the requirements of parent involvement. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That's a good question. Thank you. Are there any other questions about that? Okay. Um, that's all I, I have. And if there are any questions afterwards, I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. And again, feel free to fill out your uh, feedback form, the yellow paper. And if you know someone who wasn't able to attend and who would like to give feedback, those will be available at any time at the Board of Education. Just see me, Tanya Rex Road, and I'll be happy to give that to anybody who would like to give input on our programs. So I'll turn it over to the principals now, and however you want to proceed, Mr. Ford. And thank you all for all that you do for the kids in the county. And we know that your jobs as principals have become very, very difficult and trying times. And you all, all give your best to do your best. We should so appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tanya. So we want this to kind of do like we did last year, <coughs> informal roundtable discussion about our school's test scores. So principals, obviously, you're going to lead that discussion. But anybody, central admin, um, consultants, you know, if something's pertinent or idea pops in your head or you want to share something that you're working with that particular school, please just jump right in. Um, I think we all agree that the format like this worked well last year and um, just be open and honest. And we got so many things to celebrate. But um, as you all are well aware with Kentucky's accountability system, you can never sit on your laurels. You're never done. You never reach the pinnacle because of growth and, and just areas for improvement. So um, we didn't do an order. I guess I'll ask for a volunteer if whoever wants to go first. Mr. Ackerman. All right. Thank you, sir. Here's the microphone if anybody wants to use it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. He's on the spot. Uh, he's not, he can't say no. no sir. Yeah. Cardstock. The fancy stuff. Too expensive. Too expensive. Should have used the cheaper kind. Oh, yeah, I think that just makes it. Good idea. 
Okay, so uh, for the middle school, uh, well, I try to make it uh, where you guys can kind of see pretty easy at a glance what, what has happened for us over the last year. So in 21-22, we were a yellow school, and I know every, every principal will kind of share with you the, the meter, like red would be the, the lowest, then it goes up different colors like orange, yellow, green, and then the blue, blue would be the highest. So we were yellow the previous year uh, overall, and those scores underneath reading, math, science, social studies, variety, reflect what we scored as a whole overall school-wide. And then, you know, with the course of the year and 2023, what is it you see in green is what the change was made. And obviously we are a green school this year, so we're certainly proud of the work that our teachers and, and students have done. Really proud of them. For science, that is only seventh grade, our, only our seventh grade students get tested. Social studies, only our eighth grade students get tested. And then the writing and the editing, that is only a score that reflects eighth grade as well. That's why at the bottom here you see the reading and the math is broken down by grade level. So you can kind of track individually by the grades um, the previous year, you know, what they scored, and then after a year's time, what those students scored. And actually, it's not those students, it's a different set of students. Yeah. So just be sure we're not talking about the same, same students in this setting. Now, uh, what you see on the right, the blue fall, is our map scores. And I just put it in blue because I believe we can get there. But you, you, you can see already um, the students that we have this year are have progressed in a way. He's already told me he knows the middle school can be blue. No, I <laughs> he, he did. We um, met, we talked, and he yeah. said, we're going That's there. good. Yeah, I believe yep. there's a good chance. Absolutely. But what's really cool about that is that score that they, they received on, on the fall map, that's with very little instruction at the middle school. They just came in with that. That means they left the elementary schools with that knowledge. So I think it speaks well to what's going on in the elementary schools that they come in every year, they're progressing, and you know everybody's kind of shaking off what what we had the issues with, with um, COVID a few years ago. So very, very grateful for that. You see the same kind of setup underneath that with, with the map, the same trajectory. So again, we're pretty happy about where we are, and we believe that we can make some, some maybe greater changes this year. So in a nutshell, at the bottom, and I won't read these things to you, but these are four really big things that we feel like we're doing that are making a big difference in our students every day. Um, first of all, our school district for the last few years has been really intentional about giving and showing teaching um, teachers strong uh, professional development and engagement strategies. How can we continue to give the students the same type of information in different ways so that they can not just receive it, but really learn it and word it a little bit, change it up. Uh, and I don't want to go into too much detail because it gets kind of boring, you know, to talk about it, but I think for some people, but um, being sure that the learning targets are matched up with the standard as well is what we do a lot of talking about. And then in PLCs, every, the weeks that they're not meeting in their grade level content, um, I'm meeting with them. And we're meeting in teams, so there may be four or six teachers, and we're just talking, we talk about individual students. In your team, what student is struggling? And it may be a behavior, it may be an emotional, it may be something going on in the house, it may be academics. And we talk about what, what plan we need to put in place to get that student kind of back in the right lane. And the teachers are already doing all they can do. So as administrator and other people on the administrative team, each of us have a team, so we're a support person for the team. So if the teacher says, um, hey, this is, you know, we've called home, we have a Google Doc, so the teacher would say, this is the issue, this is what we've done, and everybody that steps in to help that student, they just write a little blurb, I go, this is what I've done to help them, this is what I've done to do. It's a little bit like the field to beat that tab, but it's a lot more personal and geared towards specific growth for a specific time for a student. PLC stands for? Professional Learning Communities. Okay. It's just an opportunity where the teachers get together with the group yeah. of kids they have. Yeah, yeah. like it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate, you I appreciate you asking. And then the last one there is just um, the opportunities that teachers have at their disposal. Like Ms. Rex, what I talked about earlier, through Title I, we use RTI, which is specifically for students who are really struggling with reading and math. And that, that program funds RTI. So that is a huge benefit to us. And we're able to help a lot of students through that. But you guys know the social and emotional effects that children face, too, is, is a really big concern. And then for those of you who aren't aware, I think maybe Mr. Ford maybe mentioned that at a, uh, at a board meeting previously, but the, the Lighthouse Mentorship Program, which we're doing here, is another great opportunity for students who maybe they don't have anybody, <coughs> male or female in their life. It's, it's not quite like a big brother, little sister, or whatever that situation is, whatever that's called, but it's an opportunity where a caring adult can get with a child who needs that extra support. And then on the back, I just put kind of a ranking to kind of let you guys know 
we're still a TSI school, which we want to shake that. Um, that's specific to our special education population. Um, but in, in terms of the counties that are a county or two away from <coughs> us, this is this is where those schools rank. Just <coughs> that targeted system. Just expand on that just a little bit so everyone's clear on that, Mr. Ackerman, the, the, the gap with uh, our students with disabilities. Okay, yeah, and I'll do a, a, a much more thorough job next month. He's coming to the board meeting, right. Let's see, so for, but that's what we do for TSI. But with our students with um, disabilities, we are really, with the help of um, Ms. Bridget Smith and Ms. Vicki Kane and Ms. Sandy, all, all, everybody involved helping us with support to say, where are the students? So if I'm a, a seventh grade student, but I'm functioning on a third grade reading level, we're intentional about giving that student help at the third grade level and trying to move them. Now, every student still has to, by law, get grade level content, so that student's still in that seventh or eighth grade classroom getting their ELA or their math, but in addition to that, they're being pulled out and helped wherever they are, whatever grade level they're on, to, to accelerate them. Ms. Dick, or do you have anything to add to that? Questions or comments, Mr. Director? Or anybody else have anything to add? Let me just go down the road. Well, he's not going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Springs Elementary School. Uh, I'm very happy, uh, excited. I sat on this when, when we found out, and I, I said I felt like it was going to be a uh, gender reveal. Uh, was like how the parent feels, and they have to, they have to hold uh, that information. Are you wearing blue for veterans? or? Well, I've had blue on ever since we talked. Yeah. Everything today is a blue day. Uh, but I, I kept calling. I, I, Rita's probably not here. She's probably a nervous breakdown. So I call her and be like, Rita. Please, can I just, I swear my staff won't tell anybody, we'll sign every form you do. Please. I don't want them to find out in the public. She's like, that was real for her. She's going to have to wait. She's going to have to wait. So finally, yeah. I bugged her enough, and she was like, yeah, go ahead. So um, it, it is hard. It's hard to sit on. Because, and two, um, I think a lot of times when this happens, if you start to, everybody's like congratulating you and all that stuff. But listen, I'm about this much. I, I, I've said, Ever since I got this job, uh, my staff, I, I put them, I put them up against anybody. Like it's so, I've never seen. I know you have schools where you may have some irritated groups, or you have some drama, or whatever. But it's like all groups, no matter how they've come together, and she can attest to this. They just, they just bond. They, they. Each grade, each grade level is like that, and I think truly, I, I think the, the level of success that has been attained there is the relationships that are built by the teachers with those kids. Those kids have an excellent support staff. They, they always know that there's somebody there that cares about them and that really works hard to see that. And I'm going to kind of go through some of that here. Yeah, they work. So if you look at the top. Uh, we were a blue indicated school with an overall rating scale of 85.7. And just for numbers, out of 684 elementary schools in the state of Kentucky, the, the, the first things that you're going to see is a combined 3, 4, 5 in all these categories. We were 68th out of 684 in reading, which puts us in the top 10%. 108th in math, which puts us in the top 15%. 42nd in combined writing for the top 6% and also 42nd in social studies for the top 6%. And we were 91st overall, which puts us in the top 13% in the state. Uh, I broke it down. Uh, Ms. Joy just said she hates letters and acronyms. <laughs> P and D is proficient and distinguished to save room on paper. So this is how we kind of broke down. And this, 
This is the telling sign to me is, is when we look at this. Out of third grade reading. In third grade, I can't say enough. That's, that's what really propelled and got our scores from where they were last year of high green into the blue category. Third grade knocked it completely out of the park and over the parking lot and into the river. Their scores went up exponentially. That's a long hill run. Uh, it was long. It, yeah, it was, a, it was an eight run grand slam. But their scores, their scores went through the roof. They had 70% proficient and distinguished in third grade reading. 69% proficient distinguished in their math. Fourth grade reading, 66% proficient distinguished. Fourth grade math, 58% proficient distinguished. Fourth grade science, 41% proficient distinguished. Fifth grade, the reading was 70%, the math was 49%, social studies 65, editing and mechanics 74%, and the on-demand 69%. So, um, and Wayne said it, I think that Russell County um, in, their, in their elementary schools really send a prepared student to that next level. And that's what we try to stress to them is, listen, it all changes next year, and I, I've said that you know, I, I had a, my whole career, a lot of it was spent middle school, high school, majority high school. And it's almost like you feel like that hand holding stage just dissipates next year when they go to middle school and you, and you try to prepare them. And that's, I can say that my fifth grade, as loving and nurturing as they are, they have that tough love to where they say, look, this is how this is gonna be. This is, you've gotta learn this way. It's no longer, it's a transition point of, of how we teach them. I think another big thing that we do and have done in the past is uh, myself, Miss Janie, and Miss Amy all claim a grade. So when all the mapping is done, all the map tests are done, and we get all that data, and we sit down and look at it, we start about a month before testing, and we go through the special schedule, and we'll go pull those kids out sit down pull two desks up outside of the art room right there in that little hallway and I'll come get you and say let's sit down let's look at your map scores let's look at where you were in the fall let's look at where you were in the winter let's look at where you are in the spring well, let's look at if you were, took the test last year let's look at where that test score was in that same category and just give them that pep talk look at how much you've grown you've grown this much I know you can do this from this last math to this and it kind of gives that sense of that child knows somebody's pulling for them. That's, like, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. That kid knows somebody's interested in how they're doing. Yeah, it's not just the guy that they go to when they're in trouble. It's right. not just the guy that does morning assembly. Because, again, I think sometimes as principals, you get to know the bad kids more than you do the good kids. But it's not just that. It's that, hey, he's pulled me out of class. He's talking to me about my math scores. He's talking to me about yeah. this or that. So I, I think that's a huge part of what we do. And it is really enjoyable to sit down with those kids and say, look at how much you've grown, or I know you can do better. I've seen you in class. I've seen what you can do. Um, on the back side, and Tanya made mention of this in the title one. One of my biggest barriers, and Russell Springs Elementary School's biggest barriers, is the EL, um, ESL students. The English is second language. I have enrolled, today is Wednesday, I have enrolled six this week. Yeah. I'm enrolling one or two weekly. Um, and the majority of them cannot speak English. Yeah. Um, and, and just I, think of the, the, of the expectations and, and then really just traumatic experience it for is. the kids. And, and it's, it is sad because, but I'm going to tell you, uh, and I'll, I know she's not here, and I would say it no matter where I was at. Um, Tiffany Skeens, you can't put a price tag on her head. No way, no how. I have never seen a human being that can get a relationship built this quick, knows everything about that family, and then works with those kids. Um, Let me interject this. something real quick. Yes. Uh, of course, she's one of the EL teachers, and there's so, that whole department, Ms. Tanya and I were meeting and talking about this, and Mr. Bell this week, too, and last week. They're such good advocates for the students they work with. Yeah. They called us out on, and as they rightfully should, of not setting up school messenger correctly to where when we send out the phone calls that it's not translated to Spanish, for example. We have a large population 
of parents there that wasn't getting messages, as they should call us out on that. So I just really appreciate them, appreciate you acknowledging that. Um, but they, they're really good advocates for their, for their, yeah. for their Tiffany, students. Tiffany, from the standpoint of this, Tiffany makes my job, Ms. Jamie's job, Ms. Amy's job, the teacher's job so much easier. And I mean, it, it's even the little things like a missed bus or a parent, a child goes to parent pickup, didn't know what we said over the loudspeaker or whatever. I mean, she's like, oh, let me call so-and-so, that's their mom or grandma. I mean, she just, she's got like a Rolodex memory. But on that, with show, the reason I say that is, is because our English language learners take the access test uh, to examine English proficiency and comprehension, listening, literacy, oral reading, speaking and writing. During the 22-23 school year, 16 Russell County students reached attainment, an increase of four from the prior year. More specifically, Russell Springs Elementary School is the only district, only school in the district with a population of EL students which count towards accountability. Russell Springs Elementary School received an overall 68.7 blue with a very high current status of 67.5, a 1.2 increase from the prior year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're dealing with that, it's, it's, a, it's showing that we're going in the right direction with that. And as they keep enrolling and keep coming with help, like what I've got with her, I don't, I don't expect to see that drop because of how she is so with it and on top of it, getting those kids every resource that they possibly need. And there at the end, I just kind of said how proud I am and excited for our school and students and faculty that work hard. And I still say that it goes back to building those relationships with kids 100%. You can, you can say I've got smartest teachers, the brightest teachers, make the best grades or whatever, but if you don't connect with that child, it's never going to happen. Never. Yeah. So, any questions? We're just saying relationships before rigor. That's right. Yeah. That's true. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Pass, pass it off to the sister in law. Yeah, but mine's a lot cuter than his, if that counts. Okay, okay. good. It counts a lot. I figured it'd be laminated. He looked at that and he was like, Really? I'm like, yeah, that's the elementary teacher for me. I can't help it. It's got to be cute, right? This <laughs> stuff's always going to be fun to see. See how it grew. on the very front if you will see this year um, we had an overall score of green this year which kind of setting you back a little bit we were at 64 was our overall number and we were right in the middle in yellow until last year we had the largest gain we have ever seen um, the largest gain uh, for uh, several of the counties we grew 13.5 percent so we went from middle yellow to top green we are actually 1.5 from the blue oh, we are close gosh. we're close we're getting there um, but we were just really tickled with that amount of growth. We really tried to, um, last year, focus on some things, improve some things. And so, actually, our reading and math had green, but you'll also see that our science, social studies, and writing actually had a blue ranking. Um, our climate survey uh, that they take went down four points, so it dropped us to high yellow. Uh, but still, it was a, was a decent score. But that was just kind of the highlight for us was that the growth was there and we made some significant gains. On the back, um, to me, it was just easiest for you to see where we were last year and where we were this year. And so the reading and math at the top, now that is overall in grades three through five. Now we spent time with each grade level looking at those, uh, but this is just our overall score. So understand last year, our reading and math, we were yellow. Uh, this year we came out green with reading and math. We met all. Of, we surpassed all the state benchmarks at every content level. And let me all say, levels. I don't know that we've said this. So it goes all the way from red, orange, yellow, yeah. green, blue. Yes. So that's the spectrum yeah. with red being the lowest. Uh, so we have met all of the. We surpassed all of the state benchmarks that they set. And so really, what we look at um, when, when we break it down, of course, you want your novice to decrease every year, um, and we did that in all content except just our math, and there was just a two percent difference. Uh, for one of our areas that's always been a struggle in Salem is our apprentice has always held a huge amount of our kids, trying to get them moved out of that a little bit. But we were successful in that. But we always look at that proficient and distinguished. And uh, when Miss Missy and I were talking earlier, there's lots of things you can look at. You can look at colors. You can look at 
numbers all day long, but this novice apprentice proficient distinguished breakdown really helps us to be able to target those kids, and this is what always makes sense to us. So when I look at that in reading and math, you will see that we had a 7% gain in reading and a 6% gain in math overall for our proficient distinguished students. Um, so we had some, a good increase, a good celebration there that we could really look at on that. Um, now, if you look at the bottom, our science, social studies, and combined writing, that actually got a blue ranking. It was one of our, it was our highest area. We were yellow last year, so we went from yellow to blue. So we <coughs> surpassed the green and went to blue. Um, our fifth grade, just like every other elementary school, has to be tested in so many areas. Um, you know, they're tested in reading and math, but they also weight so heavily because they have to do editing mechanics, on demand, and social studies. So they're tested in five areas, uh, which is a lot to ask the fifth graders. Um, so one of our focus areas last year was fifth grade. We had a large fifth grade, um, a large accountability, and just a limited amount of staff. And so we really had to figure out some ways to work on that. One of the things that we were really, really proud of was our combined writing. Now, understand that that is really made up of two scores, an editing and mechanics score and on demand. Now that's not on here, but I will tell you that our editing mechanics had 65% proficient distinguished, which was a 17% increase from the year before. And our on demand was 46%, which was an 18% increase. And that's tough. That and it's very tough. Yes. Uh, we last year really worked um, of course, Ms. you're a former writing teacher, too. So, Miss Faith, who is also a former writing That's teacher, right. Miss Faith and myself, uh, Miss Nikki Terry, we did a uh, on writing, uh, on demand writing boot camp a couple times during the year with Miss Sarah where we broke them into groups. We did some live scoring. Uh, we really tried to pour into that. Uh, one of the things that we did with fifth grade as well was when we did our RTI rotations, and we did that second grade through fifth grade, we did rotations every day. But mine and Miss Faith's time was spent. We each did a fifth grade rotation group. And so we spent 25 to 30 minutes of our day with five to six kids that we worked with in whether it needed to be grammar or writing. And they rotated throughout, uh, throughout every single day of that. So we feel like that paid off. And then our social studies saw a um, huge increase. So it is what it is when you teach fifth grade although everybody says they're not your scores, everybody kind of looks and goes, well, who's your fifth grade teachers? So last year was Miss Ann's second year teaching social studies. We had to throw that to her the year before because it was just her, Miss Sarah, and Miss Ann, and with five accountabilities. So last year throughout the year was her second year. We met um, about probably twice every nine weeks. We worked on curriculum. We worked on different strategies. We brought in guest speakers, really kind of honed in on social studies curriculum working through that with her because she didn't have the experience of that. She'd always taught math. And as you can see, you know, we went from 28% to 47%, which was a huge increase for us. Um, so that was just something that we really looked at. We increased proficient distinguished in all areas. We surpassed the state benchmark. So that was some things that we were really, really proud of. Um, we do have some things to target for this year. We now have a gap group with our uh, special education students that we didn't have before because we have enough students now to compile in that area. We didn't have the number of students, but we do now. That's increasing. So that's going to be an area that we're going to have to really look at this year and target them because they now are going to show up as a gap group for us that we need to work on. Um, so those are some of the things. Kind of to piggyback off what uh, Kevin was saying as earlier, we do it a little differently. But every time our kids test math, we meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. So, Ms. Faith and I just tag team, third, fourth, and fifth. We, we, they each have their own goal sheet. We write their score, we set a goal, we meet back in the winter. Did we meet our goal? Did we not meet our goal? What can we do differently? And we check that three times a year. So we meet with them one-on-one -on -one three times a year and, and look at those scores going up into it. And that just, it does provide some really good conversation. The kids are really open about it. They get excited about it. Um, this year we were delayed in getting to fourth grade just because it's hard trying to meet with all of them. Um, and one of the kids kept saying, oh, are you coming to fourth grade yet? Well, when are you coming to fourth grade? Because I want to tell you. And last year what we found was by the end of the year, in the cafeteria, they would come and go, I met my goal. And we hadn't even met with them yet. I met my goal this year. I'll never forget uh, fifth, little fifth grade named Evan. He was like, it's okay, Jay. Didn't meet the one. 
but I got the other one and I made it by two points. Like, and I was like, what, what are we talking about? Because I was yeah. playing the table with my map score. So they really do soak that in. <clears throat> they, they enjoy that time and we set those goals and we look at them. Um, that is something that we do. We are still doing the small groups. I feel like that's really important that we are also working with those kids. And then this summer, uh, Ms. Faith and I had the opportunity to go to the CASA conference. Um, and it was a really, really good conference. And we got to meet with some really neat principals. And one-on-one, -on -one, uh, one of the ladies that I really, I love her, I follow her on Twitter, but her name is Emily Pashwell. And so she really talked about bringing data meetings to life and different assessment things. And so we took a lot from that. So we started off this year after we did our MAP scores and then we did begin for our test analysis is, she's from the South, so she's like, we can't just say, oh, bless his heart, he can't do it. <laughs> can't say that, we gotta figure out why can't he? And so we met with students, or teachers, and we had to put them in groups. The kids that we're really worried about, is it attendance? Is it social, emotional? Is it academic? And so we began to group, what do we think that barrier is? If it's attendance, I need to be doing some home visits and let's figure it out. If it's true academics, what other intervention? Or if it's social, emotional. So there's a reason why they're not they're not there yet. And so part of our job is digging into that. What is that why? Why are they struggling? And so we have really worked on creating a top five for every single classroom and what those barriers are. And we're working through all of those kids in those classrooms, uh, trying to figure that out. What, what can we do more to help them be successful more in school. And so that was something that we really kind of gained that we're implementing this year as well. And so as we concluded our test analysis day, our teachers kind of had their own exit ticket for lack of better terms. Before they could leave that day, they kind of had to leave some feedback from Ms. Faith and I like, what are some next steps? What do we need to be doing to follow up? And um, they were very honest with us, like this kid needs this kind of check-in, or could we try this, and can we alter the schedule to do this? And so since October, we've really tried to make some of those changes in how can we support them more, because once you support them more, then they can, they're digging in there with the kids. Um, but it's truly, it truly is amazing if you sit and talk to them. Um, it's, like, it's like Kevin said, it's those relationships. And, we sat that day and looked at test scores, but the conversation weren't on the, wasn't of numbers. It was like, oh my goodness, look what this kid did. Look how well they did. <coughs> so and so who battled this all year long could do this. And so it's just getting to know those kids and, and just letting them know that you've got their back and we're here. We're all in this together. And so that's that's. And I like how you celebrate growth as much as you do a proficient or distinguished. We do. And know. so when we do our map goals. We have that conversation. You know, not every child is going to be a proficient, distinguished right. child. I wish they were. Yeah. Um, I have one of my own that has always had to struggle to reach that, and he's worked really hard for that. Um, and hats off, we got that this year, Mr. Acker. I mean, he sent me a picture, and I, he was like, not all proficient. I was like, way to go. I mean, that's, that's been a struggle. Like, we had to work for that. And so I think that side of me realizes that that's just not every child. And so we set their goal based on as that child, not a proficiency. So when we do your MAP scores again, and we can do our celebrations, it's not if you reach proficiency, it's how much did you grow? You grow, individually. How much did you grow? And that's what they get excited about is, man, they may not have made proficient, but they did reach that goal. And we try to set reasonable goals to keep just yeah. chipping away at it. Yeah. Um, so they can feel that success. Because once they get that, and they know they can do it, they keep, they keep working a little harder. Yep. So, uh, like I said, we were super proud. Uh, we were just, I think the growth is what we, we really, found our foundation on and if we can keep moving ahead then we know we're going to get there any questions sorry thank you thank you as well thank you She said you track her too. Hey, Leslie.
She talks, she says. Yeah, she does talk. I tell you, I should have worn a sweatshirt. Uh, like Are you cold? I'm freezing to death. I am burning up. I can chill up something. <laughs> At the high school, we were uh, very uh, happy that we maintained our green status. We were green last year, um, and we were very happy that we maintained it uh, <coughs> and that we increased in some areas that we thought last year were uh, our trouble spots. Uh, for instance, our reading and math scores were blue and reading and math. We made significant gains there. Uh, you look at our uh, post-secondary readiness, which uh, is always a plus. It's always good for us. But even that increased. Our graduation rate is green, but yet our graduation rate went from 93.8 to 95.8. So we're doing those things well. Our trouble areas, as you can see, yeah. science, social studies, and combined writing. Uh, I don't think it's a secret that our science department has been, uh, for lack of, I guess, a better term, kind of on its head for a little while as far as staffing goes. Uh, we have now, we have full staff and we've had that, uh, and so they're working well together. Uh, we had certified teachers in that area. We hired, uh, we interviewed uh, for a basketball coach and ended up getting a physics certified teacher <laughs> in that process. So uh, he, at the end of the basketball interviews, he said, well, you know, Ms. Tarter, if I don't get the coaching job, I'm probably going to come to you for a teaching job. I said, well, if you don't get the coaching job, I am coming for you for a teaching job. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Whitlock is with us, and he's doing uh, great guns. They, the whole department is meshed. Uh, they're undergoing reconstruction now, which we uh, thank you all so much for updating our lads. Uh, that's going well. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, today I was talking to uh, the construction manager over there yesterday. Uh, we don't even know those guys are in the building. They're working during school. We don't even know they're in the building. Uh, they're, they're not disrupting. I've not had any complaints from teachers. Um, and they're moving right on target with their work. And I think those are supposed to be finished in February. Um, but they're right on target. And, and so that's going well. Um, our school climate and safety survey, of course, is not where it needs to be. It's in the orange, and we certainly want to increase that. Uh, that was a goal of mine when I took the position as principal to change the culture of the school. And we're starting to see glimpses of that. Uh, one of the biggest complaints on this survey um, has to do with discipline. Um, you, just for clarification, these are student-centered questions where the data originates from right. on, on those. So the teachers are getting ready to do one right. uh, for the working condition survey. But these are types of things like, I'll just one off the top of my head, are, are, are rules applied fair to all students? Right. Um, do I feel safe? And then they agree, there's a, a spectrum highly agree, disagree on, on those types of things. I just want to clarify right. where that type of data comes from. It is. At the end of the test, the students take the questions. Right, take they the take test the questions. At all levels. And, uh, you know, that's not, I mean, we're not even thinking we can do an ACT prep for, for that. Right. It's, it's, it's their opinion. It's their thoughts. Um, uh, it's my thought that we do have strong discipline at the high school and that we do it fairly, but, you know, that's always in the eye of the beholder as well. So we're working on that. Um, we were concerned with our novice count at the high school. And um, we'd already started working on that, but I went to the uh, Scott Tremble workshop a couple of weeks ago and I was in a session and it said no excuse novice. And again, we had all sat down looking at our numbers, looking at our students, and we were frankly concerned. There were students on that list that absolutely had no reason to be novice and they were they were novice across the board i mean it was we sat down to look at you know broke bar truck i'll just use her you know she's like involved in everything she does everything call her out yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but on the test across the board novice 
So I know we were like really confused what's going on there. So we started talking to the kids, asking them what's going on. Here? What, what's up with you? This was, you know, come to my office. You're much better than this one. Well, what was in it for me? That's the answer in the high school. I mean, I know elementary, middle, you're moving on to the next level. You're moving yeah. on to the next level. Well, you're moving out into the real world. I've got my credits. I've got this. Uh, state testing, you know, it's not going to affect the classes I take. It's not, I'm not going to get a diploma because I've been asking those classes. So what's in it for me? So we said, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, what, I mean what that's we, basic, well, basically, that we went to them. We sent out a survey. What's it going to take? You all, uh, we think high schoolers are adults. No, no, they're not. <laughs> they're we got back simple things. I mean, we got back. Uh, they want inflatables if they do well. <laughs> yes, Miss Blank. They want inflatables. Uh, they wanted food as a reward. They wanted. Uh, could we just have free time in the gym? So. This is before we, you know, and we're looking, and so we all got together and we thought, this is pretty simple. This is okay. But you're getting input it from your state. Oh, we're getting input from yeah. them. Um, I also asked the teachers at the end of all that, and we went through the data day, and we were talking about the test scores and what we could do for kids, and we were looking at our survey and all this stuff. At the end, I said, okay, teachers, what, what can we do for you? What can we help you? Guess what? They're not adults either. Um, <laughs> They want inflatables? Well, they didn't want inflatables. <laughs> Although I did suggest that we have inflatables for the teachers and just put the kids in the gym to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, workers' comp premiums are lower yeah, right now. Yeah, so let's that. not do that. No, we're not doing that. But uh, the teacher said um, food, I mean, just a little extra lunch time, uh, maybe work in uh, an extra planning, and occasionally sometimes where they could have room to talk. So we get all that together. We get the scores back, uh, and we said, okay, let's celebrate this. That's what the kids want. Let's do this. So uh, you may have driven around the county, and you've seen distinguished RCHS student signs yeah. in the yard. We had those made. And for every student that got it distinguished, and we thought they needed a little extra. So those are in their yard. I had a parent, Mrs. Tarter, text me her daughter's picture. Of in, in the in the yard. Right. And yeah. I, I think those signs were thirteen or fourteen dollars a piece. And it wasn't putting anything. So we got the signs, we put those out. As on November first, as soon as test data was publicly released, uh, we sent Mr. Carpenter out, we sent uh, Ms. Gossage and Ms. Davidson across the county. And I said as soon as it's released at eight fifty or that morning, as soon as we can talk about it. Uh, they took off so those signs would be in the yard when the kids got home. They didn't know they were getting them. That was just extra. Um, we've put the signs in our lobby banners. If you're there, there are six big banners hanging of our proficient and distinguished students by name and the areas that they have uh, scored proficient and distinguished. We have inflatables coming tomorrow. Yeah. We have inflatables coming tomorrow. We also, uh, for our proficient and distinguished students, they're so excited. Uh, we gave our students uh, their individual test scores in an envelope with a ticket on there. Uh, they can get a lunch pass. Hang on. Don't, don't freak out. They're coming back to school. They, they can check out with parent permission, go have lunch somewhere, and then come back because they wanted food. For the students who are not driving, uh, we have a bus available. We will take them to the McDonald's area up there where they have choices and they will have that time. And we gave them specific dates they can choose. It's just not random, so. Um, and Ms. Chandler, can I just do, now listen. Yep. Know that I have a, a, a freshman, mm -hmm. and there ain't nothing that raises his name but food. <laughs> and he told me the day, he said, Mom, you know, next year, if I score really well, I get to go off campus. <laughs> I promise you. No, yeah. And there is nothing that gets Jameson excited about much people. It, it's, it's food. They're, they're all talking. All but the talk I know is now. Gonna get something but now the talk yeah. is, well, if I had known we were going to do that, <laughs> I would have done better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's simple stuff. I mean, that, that's not hard. And it's amazing that the conversations you hear in the hall. So the buzz has already started. But in addition to that, 
we go back to our novice and we sat down. Uh, after, after I came back from Scott Trimble, I said, you know, we've been looking at our novice, but he says no excuse novices. So let's break it down, kind of like KJ was saying about the barriers. So we looked, we took out uh, like special ed. We, we, we didn't have that. EL learners, which by the way, our population has grown as well as the others, and it will, we will be accountable for that coming up. Uh, and free and reduce your lunch, but still have ability. Our 10th grade reading, we came up with seven students that have absolutely no excuse why they got novice. 10th grade math, nine students, no excuse, absolutely nothing. Uh, oh, science, 11th grade, 20 students, no excuse. 11th grade, 16 students in social studies with no excuse. On demand, 14 students with no excuse. Editing and mechanics, there were 10 students with no excuse. So for a grand total, that's 76 students at the high school that have absolutely zero reason to score notes. We have their names. We have names. We've got those. They've already been identified, and uh, we're meeting with them right now and saying, what happened? What's going on? We have absolutely no excuse. This is our expectations for you. <coughs> excuse me. This was your score this year. Where are you going to be next year? Let's set let's set the groundwork. Um, and they're responding to that pretty well. I think they're kind of shocked that we like you looked at that. Out, went through it and then yes, we look at that and yes, we know and yes, we know your background and we know this and we know that. Um, so um, we, we're expecting that we're going to grow. I mean, we know that we're we're not satisfied maintaining green. Uh, we've done some staff shifting at the high school uh, to get some better focus. If you look on the back, we just listed uh, some things. I also have where we ranked with some counties around us. Uh, we too are doing the math testing and we look at uh, growth. Student naming and claiming kind of goes along with what we're doing, but we had already done naming and claiming. If a teacher has a relationship already established with that student, whether they have them in class or not, they name and claim them, and they go they go have chats with them, and they come into that. They talk with them about that. Of course, we've done the item analysis. Our PLCs are going better. We haven't always had them at the high school. This year, we have departmental planning at the same time, and so social studies can get together. And uh, Dr. Burke Trug has been with our social studies teachers. I've been in there, Ms. Anderson has been in there. And we're talking about what's going on, what's our issues. Uh, we have plans for them. Uh, and while I say that, I, I have to tell you all, having Dr. Burke Trug at the high school and Ms. Smith at our high school is just, it's a game changer. It is, uh, Ms. Smith is working with our special ed we have a new special ed head of the department there who I think is doing well. Um, we're, it, they're just, he even hosted the transition night. We did. We yeah. hosted a family transition night for special needs students. Uh, Mr. French put that together the other night. I really appreciate and that. And so uh, we hope that grows and uh, continues. Our reward system we've done, our no excuse novice. We have year round four classes now. Huh? That's sure. happened this year. Um, so I know that's going to make a big change and a big difference. Uh, we are implementing the Kagan strategies at the high school. Um, and I'm, pr I'm proud they're doing that because... Structures. It, it is... Kagan structures. Kagan structures. structures, structures. <laughs> uh, because a lot of times they, they say this doesn't apply to high school. This doesn't apply because it does at times look like elementary or, or, you know, younger kids. However, they're kids. They're still kids. We have to keep that in our mind. And so we get them together and they're talking and they're working in their groups and they're sharing the ideas. And, and it is great to go in and see uh, how our teachers have embraced that overall pretty much. And I, I have talked to Ms. McFall about getting, uh, you know, you all to come to the high school at any time. The doors are open. Uh, come in, walk down the halls, go to whatever classroom you want to go to. And you're a big advocate for the next step with Kagan because your teachers had that momentum. They and did. I know Mrs. McFall and I were talking I, about Our teachers asked if we were going to do the next yeah, step. Yeah, let's do the next step. And I think that's a positive. Yes, it because is. Because they want to do that and we want, we 
were going to do it. So they were, they even were asking for me to buy the books for their departments. And so we did. We got the, the books. And so they've all got those and they're working on those. Uh, of course, LSA uh, helps us with our graduation rate. Uh, we're going to do the ACT boot camps again. Uh, a shout out to the growth conversation. So uh, we have, we have room to grow and we're going to grow. But I think we're taking the positive steps uh, to get there. We're having hard conversations uh, with teachers and with students and with parents uh, that are not always really good to have. But I think in some sense, they think it's kind of refreshing uh, to hear from the high school because we do uh, take it for granted that they're the big kids. Obviously, we're going to um, continue to meet PLCs. We do that, we look at the data, we try to figure out, uh, like all these other folks have talked about, what groups that child ended up in and what do we do to help to mitigate um, the need, whatever it is. So we do that on a regular basis. Ms. Rebecca is going to be um, joining us for PLCs this year. Um, we do meet with kids to set goals and look at um, improvement and we are trying to use the Kagan structures. We're looking for that when I'm walking through and teachers are asking questions about that. We're really excited about the, they were excited about uh, Carol coming in and sharing all those things. We had a good day that day. Carol was the trainer that the elementary yes, school the trainer, had this summer trainer, with Kagan. Came back and went through and saw strategies, um, structures, I can't call them structures, Mr. Ford, um, at work that day. So we're really excited about science. Um, we're excited about um, social studies holding pretty steady there. We're happy with the writing scores. Um, I just had to throw in five, six, and seven there for you all to see, just because we have had some um, some recognition this year for some of those teachers. Um, we're higher than the state average in science combined writing and on demand. And although we don't have enough to um, to show in that accountability. If when you look at the school report card data, um, the EL proficiency is in the green, and that um, I'll, I'll give a little shout out to Tiffany there as well. We don't have as many students at J. 
Tracy, I don't think it's 19 or 20, but um, she does a great job of being there when we need her to help and to help the teachers to figure out how to work with those with those students. Um, I know there's room for improvement, but I feel very certain that there will be improvement. I think you'll see it next year. And um, I just need to say to everybody listening that we have a wonderful staff and we love children and they work very hard, much harder than Have Mrs. Blankenship, as you all have talked about your test scores and that significant improvement with your combined writing for proficient and distinguished, what, what, what do you all point that to? Or what, 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 what does that look like for Jamestown to have that growth in that writing like that? Well, you know, Miss Stephanie just looks at, um, she's worked and worked on different kinds of strategies, different things that uh, engage students, and it is, they do love her. It does come back to relationship. It does come back to that goal setting, and it does come back to, if you've been in her classroom, it, you go in there and the, the atmosphere is... Would you like a booth or a high top table or... It's yeah, her, that every alternate year, setting, yeah. Every year she re... Yeah. She, you know, she redecorates the whole room. And you might go in there today and she, you know, you might be on an airplane and you might be doing this, that, and the other thing. She has restaurant um, In order to set the mood for the writing that they're doing. Yes. Yes. She just, you yes. know, it's... Does good. that look like a, a, a conversation with building up to her level with accountability for kindergarten first and second? You know, does we she, do have, um, we're still using that alignment. Um, you know, with the writing policy, we still have um, a scaffolded writing plan at Jamestown. You know, kindergarten teachers are to be expected to do this, and first grade are expected to do this, and second grade. So, um, you know, but it's just a matter of building excitement for writing because kids typically don't love that. Yeah. You know, in the age of technology and texting, and they don't really want to write. Um, but, and then part of it too is, has been just the, um, the focus on writing your explanation as you go along, second, third, fourth grade. Yes, we know you know how to do it, but show us, write it down for your neighbor who doesn't know how to do it. So some of it is that. Thank you. And, and I think all the principals at one point or another has, has mentioned the coaches, and, I, and they're here with us, and I want to acknowledge them too. And the central office may have been, and dear, Dr. Barker, she works with middle school and high school, and then Miss Rebecca Skaggs worked with Jamestown, and then part of uh, Salem, right? And Miss Heather worked with Russell Springs and, and part of Salem, yeah. And then Miss Bridget Smith, special education uh, consultant, and Miss Vicki Kane, uh, special education consultant, works a lot with preschool as well. We appreciate you all, of course, the, I know you're all familiar with our central office admin, not to leave them out. And it does, uh, you know, it's not, it's, we're talking about academics today and the principals have mentioned climate and culture and things like that, but, but it's everybody. Um, you know, Coach Rexro and I, were, when we were out there on the baseball field yesterday and talking about the bus garage, and he said, as we all know, and we've repeated many times, he said, that's the, that's the group, the first person a lot of our kids see. Yeah. You know, and it takes our bus drivers, it takes our school nutrition. Miss Hope was sharing with me this morning how everything is just going really good right now in the school nutrition and all of our instructional assistants and our custodians and guidance counselors and family resource center and I'm leaving people out but it's that whole group that brings it all together for our students and so I appreciate you all everybody in this room and our great this this school community is so blessed with support too uh, outside yes sir
Well, Mr. Young, I'm going to I'm going to take account on that uh, of the word of a uh, fail. Um, many times, this district has events, and for whatever reason, parents' obligations, childcare, whatever. I remember the time that we had a um, uh, last December a awesome presentation regarding vaping, and we had one parent showed up in the evening vaping, and we had food. We had staff and we had one parent. I was glad one parent was there, um, but to say that we failed with it, our intentions were pure. Whether or not someone showed up or not, we can't force them. No, you can't, but I would say, I don't know. I didn't get any other information about the meeting except for the minutes that was going to occur. Well, it's on the radio. Now, it's on the I'm radio. Tell the kids, my child isn't going to tell me there's no. a meeting yeah. about school. But anyway, I'll accept that. Um, I think obviously the school district is doing a lot better recovery from COVID from what we read in the papers about a lot of, a lot of other school districts around the, the country and I, I really appreciate that. I also appreciate all the personal interventions that you talked about taking kids one on one and I think that's terrific. Uh, as a I think, Mr. Onion, I think the people that drive in front of our schools every day would really be amazed about the individual, like the principals talked about, the individual naming and claiming students. It's not just the teacher in front of the classroom, and here's my group, you know, and, and I'm going to spit it out and you're all going to get it, you know, that old saying. But it's so individualized. Even the instruction for so many of these kids are individualized based upon their need. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm yeah. really impressed with all of it at different levels. But STEM is the you know the going thing. It's important. Everybody has to do it because of the modern world. To some level, you do have to do it. As somebody with a math degree, graduate degrees in computer science, business foreign affairs, I think reading is the most important thing, and I think we've all talked about the foundation. But reading is the most, most important school we have to learn at schools, and then also trying to get them encouraged to read, even after they learn. But no, positively, I think you guys are doing a great job, and I know you're going to try awfully hard. Uh, I can't imagine having some of the students mind included at times you should look at it and say well, it's almost why am I trying to pound some sense into this child of course none of you talked about comedy but sometimes it needs to be good uh, I really like the award system about I think it was high school principal that's, uh, that's probably going to be a game changer for the my high school daughter, you know I can't believe she has to come home and say, hey, if I do this, I can go someplace else for lunch. Because as much as she does like the food, she would like to get out. But anyway, I want to make a comment that I am really important to understand what you guys are doing. You're trying hard. We're improving. And I'd like to see you keep doing it. But I want to make comments before we start talking about football fields and construction and all that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. So you are obviously, everybody's welcome, principals, and everybody else to stay. I know Mr. Jonathan and Larry are going to take the floor for a few minutes, but you're welcome to stay, or if you need to get back to your school, uh, we understand that as well. No, that was not addressed to you. I'm sorry, Mr. Joy. That was to the principals and anybody else that knew. Mr. Smith, Mr. Larry, you all are welcome to get one of these seats closer up if you want to. No? Okay. Next item on the agenda is school year 2022-2023, end of year assessment results review. School and district improvement plan. That was this conversation. We don't have to 
Okay, review and accept reject bids on old area technology center renovation. We still ain't got a name. So the bids order. for the renovation of the old area technology center were opened and tabulated on Thursday, November second, twenty twenty three. The total for all the bids, including alternate number one, is three million twenty six thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars. That's the construction cost. Of course, there's soft cost uh, that reflected on the BG one. The original cost estimate for construction was two million five hundred twenty eight thousand. So that's a difference of almost five hundred thousand dollars between the original cost estimates and the um, uh, the actual bid estimates. So Mr. Smith had the uh, the bid recommendation letter, um, and I'm just going to say. If you all have kept up with any news in, in construction, certainly in the state of Kentucky, but nationwide, um, you can get all the best estimates that you can when it comes down to it. There's a lot of work out there. Contractors get to pick and choose. I don't know of anybody that's ever had a cost estimate. Maybe Mr. Smith does, and it came out what, it, what they thought it was. Um, it just doesn't hardly work right now. So this is over. That's disappointing. Um, but we do have the bonding capacity to move forward with it. So, Mr. Smith, you can touch on it. All the uh, contractors you have listed there, if you have clarified scopes of work with all those contractors, so we do know we have a complete scope of work. A lot of these contractors are working with currently on other projects, so we know we've got a good uh, cast of contractors. So uh, I'll answer any questions, but with the bids we have received in the alternate, uh, we do recommend that you award to the contractors who have now listed there. And it is a good group of contractors. It's people that uh, you all have worked with before and we're familiar with a lot of them in the district. Babcon has actually been out here hand in hand uh, on this with the athletic project. So we have lots of local contractors too. Yeah. I recommend approval of bids for the old area Lake Cumberland Technology Center uh, renovation project be uh, approved as presented. I'll make a motion to that effect. Is there a second? Can I second it? Uh, Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Selby? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Higginbotham? Yes. Mr. Gazoo? Yes. Uh, I know, Mr. Smith, you have to develop a schedule and things like that. Do you have a rough timeline of what you're thinking about? or? Uh, contractors are ready to start demo as soon as we get the asbestos cleared up and we get a clear no health grid. As soon as we get that done, we will be ready to start once uh, we get all our permits. As part of this project, we are doing asbestos abatement on that building, and so that will be a building that will no longer be on our survey report as having asbestos in it. And so that, that he's saying once that's done, the abatement process, uh, the, they'll be ready to start. How many years that built? 68 or something? 67, I think, was the first part. Yeah. The old is me. No. <laughs> he said, No, it ain't. <laughs> Watch it, Jonathan. Okay. All right, next item is proposal and request for Russell County Schools Athletic Facility Upgrade. We have three proposal requests, but I know um, Larry's in here. And I think we can all agree that I know we've had good weather and we've got good contractors, but Larry, I just do want to thank you publicly um, because I don't think any of us really thought we would be where we're at at this time frame of, of everything. Um, we got some, you know, obviously some still work to do, and I'm really excited about these proposal requests here. I think it's going to make for a more um, finished and a, and a good looking project. So there's three proposal requests, and I'll, I'll kind of hit the highlights, and then Mr. Smith can um, can run the details with them. Some additional masonry work, it's $9,980, and again, we, we have all this in the contingency. There's some areas of um, that really, I've talked with them, we met with them, grass is not really going to work right now, and it's going to wash out, so we could approval for sod to be laid. It's going to have a lot neater, a neater, cleaner project and kind of keep the area clean. Um, it's eleven thousand nine hundred seventy-six dollars and thirty-three cents, and they're ready to do that, Mr. Smith, as soon as the board approves and pulls the trigger. And then some additional con uh, concrete items at a total of thirty thousand five hundred four dollars and forty-two cents. One of those areas is 
a, uh, I'll call it a triangle. It's out to the, kind of in between the tennis courts and the, and the track. And I'd already reached out to the engineers, Ben and, and Doug with AGE, and said, you know, I've, I've really got a concern for this area. It's supposed to be grass right now. If we try to mow it, it's going to mow grass. It's going to blow grass either towards the tennis courts or it's going to blow grass on the track. And then is that progress uh, or, or the discussion? So I said, you know, big landscaping rock, which we really didn't want that out there because of proximity to the track and people's good. So if concrete finish, and then we've talked with, and I don't have a price for this to present to you all, have a concrete and then um, to have, I'm going to call it outdoor carpet, but it's a, a shorter nap of, of turf, is that what you would call it? Put that out in this triangle area and um, get some nice memorial benches and have it one of a dedication area uh, for Mr. Larry Kennett. Um, it, would, it would solve some problems. It would be a really nice area for him in the middle of our athletic complex and being our first athletic director um, and just really clean it up and not having the area that we try to mow, which we would never be able to keep mowed um, and, and keep it neat um, in that area. And I don't know that grass would grow really well. So that's one of the concrete areas. Um, the tennis courts have turned out a lot better than what we, we thought we would with, with a pad. And there's an opportunity to put a bleacher pad on the east side. Would that be east side? West side. West side. Yeah, there you go. The west side of, of, the, of the tennis courts. And I've been out there with the tennis coach, and he's really excited about that. Um, just some opportunities, good opportunities for improvement with some of the – and extend the bleacher pad on the uh, visitor side of the baseline when I have the coach out there. Um, another area that would cause for grass, but it wouldn't it wouldn't do well either. But if we could have some concrete out there and just keep the area a lot neater and cleaner, um, it's kind of like one piece of the puzzle as you work through all this. But those three proposal requests, and Mr. Smith, had anything you need to with that? Oh yeah, thank you. Generally, because put this curb and gutter in projects that you're looking for would we'll probably get torn out in a year or two. So we decided to take some of that curb and gutter out to allow for the expansion later and not spend that We get to years. work on the field house and work on the bus garage situation. Um, like Mr. Smith said, that we would be tearing that right back out and it's $6,000 that we could just deduct from it uh, for that. We're also doing a little additional storm work it's really all about project improvement. I mean, every bit of this is. Uh, it'll make for a nice finished project, and again, we have um, contingency money to do that. One other thing we're working on, or they're working on, to bring to you all. Um, to discuss is an, an area for a practice field behind the visitors, bleachers, using that extra contingency funds. Um, meeting with the uh, folks yesterday, they he said Christmas for the baseball probably looked to be done, so we're really running Whoa. good on our contingency funds, um, and it would really help with middle school football, baseball, band, and soccer if we had a practice area uh, where they could go to because in the fall it's really really busy. If middle school has a home game, football still needs a place to practice, you know, and all those types of things. And so, yeah, we don't have any of that right now. Uh, so we want to keep the existing soccer field just for scheduling purposes as well. So that's something we'll, we'll come back. I think he said on that email today he'd be here Friday or Monday to stake it out. Yeah, and see what it costs to, to bring that to you all. And the coaches are really excited about that possibility as well. Yeah, I recommend it. I'm sorry. Be, it's going to be something to look at. It is. It sure is. It's, there's just, it's just it's a high quality project and it's going to mean a lot to this whole community. I wonder if I've got any eligibility. You don't have any eligibility left to play. <laughs> Tanya, does she? No, I think she used it last year. Last year. <laughs> oh, man. Like, yeah. I want my COVID year. Brother. <laughs> Miss Sandy said, if you're going out my team, she's coming too. Oh, no. It's not on my team. <laughs> <laughs>
So I recommend approval of the proposal request number 10, 11, and 12 for the Russell County Schools Athletic Facility Upgrade Project and authorize Superintendent Ford to complete the change orders. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. second. I'll second. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Selby? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Hickenbotham? Yes. Mr. Gazoo? Yes. This table cost me. We use it. We save them. Well, I'm going to move it. Next item on the agenda is a proposal request for Russell County High School Science Classrooms and Lab Renovation Project. I'll echo what Mrs. Tarter said. Really appreciate uh, uh, the work that's going on at the high school, and it's, it's just it's always hard with students, um, but it's gone it's gone on really well. And he was he I talked to him the other day too. And he was equally as complimentary towards the students and the staff, Mr. Tarter, because he said there's been no interference from anybody as well. So yeah. everybody's everybody's doing well. So two pro proposal requests. Uh, one is a credit. We always like credits, money coming back. It's changing the flooring because after the casework was selected, the color of the casework, the original flooring that was selected, it would be a clash, Mrs. Tarter. Would that be a good a good point? Because I've not made these color selections. I've talked to them. And Kelly Kelsey's kind of ran the yeah. ran the show with it, but it would be a big clash, and it kind of it worked out with a deduct of six six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars, and then the next one. And, you can explain that a lot better than I can. I'll when we took up one of the teacher's stations, there was an old trench under that teacher's station that architect or anybody didn't know about. It was getting covered up. Part of it was left open. It was an open trench, and it's nothing that we hadn't used in prior time. There's about 70 million feet of it, so we've actually got to saw that out and get that filled back in uh, because the teacher stations are moving and the sizes of them are changing, so we can't leave it open. So it was just one of those unforeseen really didn't know until we removed one of those teacher stations. And there's contingency in this project too, of course required, but with the deduct of the flooring, we're still a net yeah. um, for this one so far. So I recommend approval of proposal request number one and two for the Russ County High School Science Lab uh, Classroom Renovation Project and authorize Superintendent Ford to complete the change orders. Make that motion. Second. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Selby? Yes. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Seganbotham? Yes. Mr. Gazoo? Yes. Is he got anything else to say? I, I'm sure. <laughs> Next item is public comments. Do you have anything else right now, Mr. Anybody else have public comments? Forever holds your peace. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody's time today, and, and I know it's um, in the middle of the day, but some of the stuff was time sensitive, and it, it helped the principals being able to get with you all in the middle of the day as well. All in favor of them for the. Yep. Right. I don't think nobody will stay longer, do you? Jim don't want her to stay no longer. Does he, Harry? He's going to call her out. I mean, he's worried me. I don't call him. Yeah. 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 Yeah.